Well, good morning and welcome to uh, Mill Creek Park. On behalf of the Kansas City, Missouri Board of Parks and Recreation Commissioners, we'd like to thank you for attending Fountain Day 2015. We're gathering today at the iconic J.C. Nichols Fountain to celebrate its first major restoration since it was first installed in 1960. We also will celebrate the completion of the Seville Light Fountain, which is across the street to the west. The Seville Light Fountain was built in honor of our sister city of Seville, Spain. The J.C. Nichols Fountain is on top of everyone's list as their favorite fountain in Kansas City. You read publications, the magazines, and all of those uh, guides about fountains. Number one is usually J.C. Nichols. The fountain and the area around it is Casey's center stage for those special moments, for photographs, for special occasions, and the proms, and the wedding receptions, and all those special memories happen here at the J.C. Nichols Fountain. Also, it's a great place for people to express their freedom of speech. The fountain is also showcased on Monday Night Football, and as we all vividly remember, it was the place to be in blue October, Kansas City Royals, in the fall of 2014. And as we say, you, gotta, you, know, you have to knock on wood when you do this, you know, 7 0, so another great year ahead of us on that. All this is made possible by merchants, companies that donated their time and their talent, our great partners with the City of Fountains Foundation, and the generosity of the Nichols family. Also, we're going to have a special announcement regarding our next project from Mr. Greg Grace from the Burns and Mack engineering firm. Also, we'll be hearing from uh, the president of the City of Fountains Foundation and from Kay Collison, who is representing the Nichols family here today. First, I'd like to now introduce Mr. Jean-Paul Chiron. Mr. Chiron is the president of the Kansas City, Missouri Board of Parks and Recreation Commissioners. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome uh, to Fountain Day 2015. What a beautiful day. We were commenting earlier that for the past two years, we've gotten rained on, on Fountain Day. Uh, and this year, we got ourselves a, a beautiful, iconic day behind me, of course, is an iconic fountain. Uh, before I get started, I'd like to thank uh, some uh, my uh, uh, other former commissioners for the Parks and Rec Board, Mrs. Anita Gorman, who is here. And of course, Mr. Carl DeCapo. And uh, my other fellow commissioners, of course, Dave Mecklenburg, Alan Dillingham, and Amber Hackett, who are also here joining us today. And we're missing one, Mary Jane Judy. She's down the block at her office, so we'll just wave hi to Mary Jane. She's busy uh, working on a legal case, so she couldn't make it here today. Um, we, of course, have been working hard diligently on several projects, uh, in, uh, including the one behind us. There's been nine fountains that we've identified as Parks and Rec Board, along with the City of Fountains Foundation, that really needed some extra special work with some uh, dollars that unfortunately we weren't able to cover through our parks budget or through the resources of the city. And so we needed to go out and raise dollars uh, privately to get that done. And we've had some tremendous success as a result of that. And that success wouldn't have happened without some really uh, amazing individuals and corporations here in Kansas City and foundations as well. I just want to highlight four of those and thank some people along the way for their efforts in getting these fountains fixed. Of course, behind me is the J.C. Nichols Foundation. Um, and the, the improvements have been ha have occurred as a result of the following uh, individuals and corporations and foundations Miller Nichols Charitable Foundation Waters Edge Aquatic Design uh, J.E. Dunn Construction Company we have Terry Dunn representing uh, J.E. Dunn here today uh, the Ground Foes Pump, uh, Pump Company and uh, Taggart Objects Conservation so now a round of applause for those companies for making uh, this project happen of course, Mark mentioned the Seville Light Foundation, which sits here right across the street. Uh, and that wouldn't be possible without the Country Club Plaza Transportation Development District, as well as uh, Conservator Jensen uh, Conservation Services, Inc. So a round of applause for them as well. And then another iconic uh, fountain of ours, which is the William Volker Memorial Foundation. And that is being taken care of and through the support of the Hall Family Foundation with the assistance of Sally Groves, the Ewing Marion Coffin Foundation, the Muriel McBrien uh, Coffin Foundation, the KCPL Fund, and, uh, and I recognize, I believe, Elizabeth Danforth here and Chuck Casley are also here representing uh, Kansas City Power and Light. Of course, once again, J.E. Dunn, Construction Company, and Burns and Mac, uh, Burns and McDonald with uh, Greg Graves, our CEO. He's here in attendance and will be speaking as well. So a round of applause to all of them for their efforts in getting the William Volcker Memorial Foundation back 
And then the last, of course, is the Meyer Circle Seahorse Foundation, which many of you know and have seen. Uh, and we'd like to thank a special thank you to the Tom Ward family for their efforts in getting that fountain back to uh, it, its, its luster. So with that, I am going to um, thank you all once again for being here and introduce our wonderful mayor, Mr. Mayor Sly James, who's going to be talking to you a little bit about the importance of Fountain Days in Kansas City. And there's somebody clapping already for the mayor. So with that, Mayor Sly James, come on up. Well, good morning, and thank you all for having me here today. It's a great day. It's a perfect day. I just wish the Royals were playing today. Um, kind of like to keep that momentum going. Uh, but we all know that Kansas City has become known for a lot of truly wonderful things. A growing tech industry, uh, the charming Royals, the success of the Royals team, barbecue, smooth jazz, high quality of life, top-notch amenities, an electric and eclectic, lively art scene, and the list really could go on and on and on. But people have always and will always identify Kansas City as the city of fountains. These beautiful structures make our home city more picturesque and inviting and set us apart from any other city in the world. They serve as a source of pride for our residents. They make the city feel a little bit more like Paris, minus some of the other things about Paris that we probably could do without. Uh, and recently, one of our most iconic fountains here behind us has gotten a mega facelift and it's something that's been needed and something that I think is really going to pay dividends. I really can't wait to see what it looks like and how it functions. So I'd like to give special thanks to the Miller Nichols Charitable Foundation for their generous support and revitalization of the J.C. Nichols Fountain. I'd also like to thank all of those who worked hard, sometimes around the clock, uh, to make sure that this, this fountain and all of our other fountains remain in good shape and as a source of pride for this city. So thank you for having me here. Please enjoy the day. Please enjoy these fountains. Please enjoy our city. And as I like to tell people, if you can't love Kansas City now, then I don't know when you ever will. Thank you very much. I'd like to now ask uh, Mr. Pat O'Neill, the uh, president of the City of Fountains Foundation, to come forward and make some comments. Mr. O'Neill. Thank you, Mark, and thank you, uh, Mayor James. You know, there's no doubt that this mayor loves this city, and he loves, like, like we all do, to show off our signature fountains, you know, to visiting dignitaries, to national media, and to businesses looking to relocate here. Our mayor even sports a blue bow tie when the Royals aren't playing. With any luck, he may lower our water bill, too. But uh, uh, as he said, I'm Pat O'Neill, new president of the City of Fountains Foundation. A little bit about that. The City of Fountains Foundation was created about 40 years ago when a couple from Kansas City was in Italy admiring the fountains, many of those fountains which are hundreds of years old but don't work anymore. And the mission uh, that they came back with was to create... Um, to encourage the expansion and the maintenance and the long-term endowment of our city's signature collection of fountains. Now at 48 city-owned fountains, although there are more close to 300 in the metro area. But the idea was to raise private dollars for major repairs and upgrades as needed. I'd like for all the board members of the City of Fountains, including our outgoing president, Casey Cassius, who worked really, really hard this last year to raise dollars for this and other fountains, um, to please raise your hand. Thank you. It's a quiet, unassuming group of people that have done a, a yeoman's work in the last year, and also our sole and overworked staff director, Peggy Farrell, who's over there with, with City of Fountain books. Anyone who would like to pick up a City of Fountain's books today uh, for $50 donation to the Wish Upon a Fountain Foundation, that would be terrific. Uh, but as, as John Paul said, not long ago, uh, the City of Fountain's work, working with, the, um, with Parks and Rec identified nine nine fountains of our very familiar fountains that have extensive structural, operational, or safety needs, uh, upgrade needs. Uh, and these are repairs, as he said, that will go well beyond the city's frugal maintenance budget. Anyone, anyone who works with fountains knows that they're like roses. They're beautiful, but they're fragile. 
prone to damage from freezing and thawing and all the ravages of other ravages of the Midwestern weather that we have. The Wish Upon a Fountain campaign was created about 20 months ago to engage the public and Kansas City's generous philanthropic community to step up and help. And like our Royals, the Wish Upon a Fountain campaign had a great year in 2014 and we're off to a really good start in 2015. We are more than two-thirds of our way to a goal of raising approximately three and a half million dollars in checks and in-kind contributions to fix and restore these nine special fountains. This Kansas City's most beloved fountain being the first one. The second one is just across the street, the graceful Seville Light Fountain. And you may realize that that fountain has not poured water for some seven years. And as you will hear shortly, uh, funds have been raised and work is set to begin on uh, two of our more iconic fountains in the city. In other words, we're almost there. Thanks to Mr. and Mrs. Saul Epstein, who made a gift in memory of Melina Epstein and to the Cerner Corp, Waddell and Reed Companies, Jim Chapel, and the city of North Kansas City. Fundraising is nearly complete for the Northland's beautiful Children's Fountain. Thanks to Estelle and Robert Long Ellis Foundation and a very generous gift from my friend James B. Nutter Sr. right in front of me who's done so much for Westport, Ivanhoe, and so many other Kansas City neighborhoods. Thanks to him, we can soon begin work on the venerable Half, Delbert Half Memorial Fountain, which is at the gateway to Swope Park. We still need the support of your business, your estate, or charitable foundation to be able to repair and restore the following Kansas City landmarks. The West Side Fountain at Summit and Southwest Boulevard, Boulevard Brewing Company and the Mason L. Dean Foundation at the Bank of America have made initial contributions challenging their neighbors to do the same. The Sprint Foundation and the Mac Healthcare Corporation Fund have made initial contributions toward the renovation of the Spirit of Freedom Fountain at Cleveland and Cleaver and have challenged their neighbors to do the same. Finally, the, the Firefighters Memorial Fountain at 31st and Broadway, such an emotional piece of, of work is thanks to KCMO's 1% for Art program, it's possible to further beautify and expand the fire, fire, firefighters' memorial and message around that fountain, and you can help us finish that job. Many others have stepped forward in so many ways to help with these and the other 39 fountains that this, our city owns and that our awards-winning parks department takes care of. I think we owe a special thanks to H&R Block Foundation, which voluntarily maintains the Henry Woolman Block Fountain in front of Union Station, another very iconic and often photographed fountain. The, the William T. Kemper Foundation, which voluntarily maintains the Muse of Missouri sculpture and fountain at 9th and Missouri, which or at 9th and Maine, which you see on so many, in so many photographs of our city. And thanks to Commerce Bank Shares and the DeBruce Foundation. These are companies that have pitched in without selecting a particular fountain, saying use it as you need it. Uh, the Missouri Bank, the UMB Charitable Foundation, J.B. Reynolds Foundation, David and Mary Jane Say, Dave and Michelle Kaufman, the Jack and Martha Stedman Foundation, the Martha Jane Phillips Star Donor Advised Fund and the Star family, which may be here today. They helped us last year repair the and upgrade the Eagle Scout Fountain on Gillum. Even the residences of residents of Wexford Place, an assisted living facility, have kicked in. Now, uh, special thanks to Casey Councilman, Councilwoman Jan Markerson and Councilman Jim Glover for their help. And last but not least, the fantastic flat Splash Mob kids. Are you here, Splash Felix, you guys? These guys from Arts Tech at Paseo, they came out almost every Saturday last summer and painted a giant mural on this corner. And it was to bring attention to these fountains. So special thanks to you guys. It is, my, it is my pleasure to introduce someone that many of us in the, in the business community know. He's a gentleman, a business leader. I call him a civic warrior who believes in the future of Kansas City and who never shies away from a big idea. Mr. Greg Graves. Thanks, Pat, and good morning, Kansas City. I get to make a really fun announcement this morning on behalf of the 5,000 employee owners of Burns McDonald that at the insistence of my dear friend Anita Gorman, and with the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours donated by the folks who work at my firm, and with a great contribution from the Dunn family and the employee owners of J.E. Dunn, with financial contributions from Kansas City Power and Light and, of course, the Hall and Ewan Kaufman Foundations, that this summer, hopefully in August, 
we will cut the ribbon on a new and improved Volker Fountain. Now for the one or two of you who don't know, the Volker Fountain is located just east of here on the south side of uh, Brush Creek. And it has been and will be again one of Kansas City's great and iconic fountains. Now the Volker Fountain needs some help and has been, uh, has been decimated really over the years by the waters of the Brush Creek. But in the future, it will operate off clean water with a great new recirculation system. Kansas City deserves new, more, and more beautiful fountains, and I promise that's what we're going to give you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Greg, for your comments and your generous contribution to the Volker Fountain. And now I'd like to ask uh, Kay Collison to come forward. Kay's name has been mentioned a couple times, and as you've heard, her family and her personal support is made today possible. Thank you all for coming on this really beautiful day. Two days ago, I might have said you needed raincoats, umbrellas, but uh, Kansas City is enjoying uh, the best today. Um, many congratulations to the City of Fountains Foundation, Parks and Rec Department, and for Kansas City, Missouri, for their leadership and for their support to restore one of Kansas City's most treasured fountains. Since the J.C. Nichols Memorial Fountain was dedicated nearly 65 years ago on May 15, 1960. It has become a symbol for Kansas City and the City of Fountains and one of the city's landmarks where visitors and Kansas Cityans enjoy the fountain's eight sculptures and water display. The mystery of the fourth original dolphin sculpture was solved five years ago and it is part of this restoration. You'll find it in the northwest corner of the fountain itself. It was originally, it was reinstalled as part of what you see today. The fifth dolphin now has its own place close to the fountain and it will be treasured for its beauty and unique story. The fifth dolphin is the one that's in the separate area facing the fourth dolphin. Originally, when the fountain was purchased, there were three, only three dolphin sculptures. So a fifth dolphin was cast in Italy and put into place in the fountain. The mystery of the fourth dolphin sculpture was solved when Stephen Singer of Florida researched the dolphin sculpture which his family had purchased many years ago on Long Island. His sculpture was originally part of the fountain that came to Kansas City. We are grateful that Mr. Singer made the connection through the internet <laughs> and then making the fourth dolphin available to the Parks and Rec to rejoin the original seven sculptures. And you'll notice that there are eight very large horses. They are to represent the four great rivers of the, uh, on Earth. The Miller Nichols Treble Foundation and the Nichols family are very, very grateful for the contractors who not only were part of this project team, but donated services to restore the fountain. J.E. Dunn Construction Company, Grunfos Pop Corporation, Waters Edge Aquatic Design. We thank you for your involvement in this project and your dedication to Kansas City. Many, many vendors were involved in this project to make it a success and help restore the fountain so that it's beautiful today as it was when it was dedicated over 50, 65 years ago. Artworks, Belger Cartage, Broski Fence, Chamberlain Contracting, Dickey Sales and Miracote, Nelson Atkins Museum, Rodriguez Mechanical, Taggart Objects Conservation, West House, Hughes Electric, Words and Pictures Corporation. Thank you all. The restoration was a challenging project because it is one of a kind, one of a kind. There's only one of these in the world and so special to Kansas City. I'm especially grateful to Casey Cassis, City Fountains Foundation, and Mark McHenry, Park Department for your personal interest and the leadership on this project over the past several years. It has been an honor to work with you and the renovation, see the renovation in progress and congratulate the individuals of whom there were many and the companies who were involved. Thank you Kansas City and I hope you enjoy it for a long, long time.
we invite you afterwards to walk around the fountain and carefully inspect all the figures, uh, how it has been, the basin and the initial cap is reconfigured and to obviously look at the fifth dolphin. We're going to use technology here to turn the uh, Seville light fountain on. Yeah, that's what it is. Some kind of a Wi-Fi thing, I think is what they call it. <laughs> so, uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to turn over to the Seville light. The Seville light is that way. And uh, we're going to wave the signal and it'll be turned on. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. There it is. See the water coming out of the uh, line. All right. Yes. So now that was our opening act. Seville light is on. And now we're going to push the big button. This actually has a direct connection, so it doesn't require that Wi-Fi thing. See if I can get everybody around there to make this happen. We're going to do a countdown on this one. We'll start out with five, four, three, two, one. It's on.